So I'm about to press post on my official announcement on LinkedIn, which is where I spend most of my time on. I'm really nervous <laughs> about, about this decision, actually. Well, not the, the decision. I know I want to do this in my heart of hearts, but once the, the, the cat is out of the bag, you can never put the cat back in. And I do wonder, what will people think of me? How will this impact my career going forward? Okay, let's do it. A few years ago, I went on a trip to Tobamori, which is the Bruce Peninsula in Ontario. It's this beautiful, scenic peninsula, and there's a park there, a cliff called the Grotto. It's a very common place that people go when they're young and they're feeling adventurous to jump off the cliff and go into the lake. I remember to this day, the feeling of jumping off that cliff, of falling and screaming, and it being so high that I ran out of breath and was able to scream again. I can remember the feeling of being at the edge of that cliff, working up the courage to jump, and the, the blood pressure rising, the tingliness in your hands. That's how I felt today. Today I felt like an entire day's worth of standing on the edge of that cliff, waiting to make that jump. I announced my campaign today, publicly for all the world to see. But I just wanted to take a minute and simmer and share with you the range of emotions that I'm feeling. Everything from nervousness to excitement, to relief, to happiness, to just everything. So, now that I've gotten that part over <laughs> with, let's dive into what I did to prepare for this launch. Number one is you have to have a website. It has to be up and ready to go. The campaign that I'm trying to run is hopefully going to be super integrated and, and very modern with lots of technology. There's actually a lot that you can do today with Google Analytics, with digital tools, and that'll be for another episode. Today, I want to say that the number one thing you should have is your website. The majority of people will look at what's called above the fold or the first thing that they see. The more that someone has to scroll, the less they look at. You need to make sure that your website captures everything that you want people to know right away. Typically, it starts with something like a, a hero image. And the best image is of the candidate smiling, looking directly at the voter or at the camera. You also want to have either a logo or some sort of slogan and then a call to action. And in my case, the call to action was an email sign up. You want opt-ins for people to continue to look at your campaign so that you can do things like solicit them for donations or give them updates on how the campaign is going or give them weekly newsletters. The number one thing is a digital infrastructure to launch. The next thing that you need to think about when you're launching uh, online are the channels with which you're going to announce. You should always pick channels where you already have a following or where the most number of people who will see your story are. For me, that's LinkedIn. To me, becoming public was the moment that I pressed post on my LinkedIn post. But of course, there's lots of other things in terms of social media. Uh, we worked with the Electoral District Association and their social media accounts to ensure that a lot of different posts were, were made at the same time. Uh, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, an email blast to the membership of the Electoral District Association, all of the followers that the Green Party has in the riding area. Another thing that I did was I actually wrote an op-ed that got published in Corporate Nights. And the op-ed is all about why Canada needs scientists to run for office now more than ever. Fitting, I know. And the whole point of the article was to explain a little bit behind the motivations of why I want to run specifically. And they were they were kind enough to be able to actually publish the op-ed at the same time and same day that I was announcing publicly. So if you can, try to find local media or press or something where you can publish even a Medium a blog post 
like try to publish something that will help you amplify your message and uh, actually get put out there into the wild. The next thing that I did is I also prepared a personal email blasts to um, some of the networks that I've been involved in. Uh, one of these communities, for example, is Massey College, which is a graduate research community at the University of Toronto. You want to kind of have these emails uh, written out and ready to go so that all you have to do is press send and, and send them to people. Another thing that I did is I prepared a press release. You can Google online how to write a press release. The, the basic concept is to make it as easy as possible for the reporter, whoever it may be, to, to actually run the story. It can be kind of difficult to find uh, the local media outlets what you should do is make a list of every media outlet within your city. The city of Toronto has uh, a list of all of their media contacts for their uh, assignment desk. If you just Google city of Toronto media assignment desk, uh, it'll pop up. And that was a great place for me to start with uh, respect to sending out press releases. I'll admit, I didn't actually get anyone respond to me uh, for that. There's a lot of stuff happening in the news right now. I can completely and totally understand why me declaring and announcing that I'm running for office may not be the number one thing on the list. Another thing that I was able to have in place for my public launch were a few endorsements, which included uh, former Conservative Senator Hugh Siegel, the Deputy Leader of the Green Party of Ontario, Diane Sachs, and uh, actually my fiance's aunt, Audrey O'Brien, who was the, the first ever and only female clerk of the House of Commons. The last thing, of course, that I did uh, was launch my YouTube channel. Uh, I, I don't really know that much about YouTube channels or digital anything, but as I said, I really wanted to start a vlog to help guide people along this journey on, on what it's really like to run for office and the amount of uh, effort and time that it takes to do that. So I'm going to be completely honest with you and Frank, I am exhausted. It's been a super long day. Uh, I, and it's just been a lot of my mental bandwidth has been taken up. But I wanted to share with you this one last thing. On announcement day, the very first day of the campaign, we were able to raise $1,325 just from announcing. I know this may not seem like a lot of money, but it's an incredibly, it's just, it's a lot of money to me. Going into today, I was extremely nervous about, about announcing, about jumping off that cliff and taking the plunge into this. I, I thought, Does, is anyone going to care? Will anyone donate? Will anyone, will I lose friends over this? Will this impact my future career opportunities? All of the, all of the crazy, scary things that go through your head went through mine. And at the end of the day, $1,325 were donated today, the first day of the campaign. You, I am just speechless at, at, at that. That's an incredible amount of money. <laughs> um, and thank you. So uh, this was this was not I this was all over the place. This vlog was all over the place today. But I I just felt I needed to explain like what it feels like to launch publicly to tell the world that you're doing this, the the sense of relief, the sense of excitement, the sense of exhaustion, and it's and it's just the start. It's just the beginning. If you like this episode, if you want to continue following along, uh, please like, please subscribe, please visit my website. Uh, please donate so that we can run a winning campaign and you can continue to see what it's like to do that. Mm -hmm.